hey, guess what? It's February and this stuff's coming off. We're going to catch some rainbows at ISOF. Check it out. we're we doing today I'm trying to fix this thing on the back of my seat so that my car is cleaner the most important thing when you go fishing you gotta have a clean car not cluttered you don't think that they're in storage I don't think they're in storage Oops. what'd you forget you kids out. don't forget your dignity always bring it with you <laughs> did you remember your boots I got two boots, and other people have less than two boots today. I don't even have one boot. I have zero boots and zero nets. They're in my driveway. Gotta go get them. <laughs> okay, we are headed out to fish today. It's February, but we we have a lake that we know that has um, that has no ice, and we're going to go there in February for the first official Stillwater gig of the year. I've got Brent with Farbank here, and he's agreed to tag along with us as long as we don't make fun of him. Yeah, that and <laughs> you have to tell me at some point what we're doing today. That will remain All I a know secret. Is <laughs> yeah, we're going to go still water early season. There's not going to be a ton of crazy hatches. So we're going to work our way up usually. So we want some blood worms, larva, um, probably some pupa patterns. I don't imagine the fish are going to be too uh, high in the water column. But anyway, it's kind of an interesting thing because this lake doesn't usually ice off this early and it hasn't been particularly warm. But we do know that fish are going to eat a ton of chronomids. There are also scuds. So between scuds and chronomids, well, also boobies. So between scuds, chronomids, and boobies, calabatas can be good sometimes too. So between scuds, calabatas, boobies, chronomids, damsels, blobs, fabs, and more chronomids, that covers the basis. Okay, so a limited menu. A very limited menu. Bobbers only. Bobbers only. Cool. Because we love them. <laughs> Lance decided to uh, take the scenic route to pick up his waders. I thought he had done this a few times before. I don't know. Lance, you should have learned by now. So he also wanted to bring a net. And a like net? he's going to catch fish in winter. That's presumptuous. <laughs> but we are going to go across this busy road and jet it. Woo! <laughs> And we're gonna meet Lance at the Maverick because that's where adventure starts. <laughs> well, we're hoping that it's as updated as it says it is. Sure. Because the dude fished it. Breakfast burritos here are so good but I'm not eating tortillas nowadays. Oh, nice. Got a load. Come on back. That'd be great. So did you remember your uh, stuff? Yeah, I got all my stuff. Even my boots. 
good. It is good, actually. Really good. What you got there? This is core power. Wow, those fish don't have a chance. No, unfortunately, I haven't had one of these in a few weeks, and so that's why I forgot my wading boots. I mean, Anthony will still come in, but... Not enough amino acids in the brain. We're kind of working with them. Lance, what are you doing? Uh, attempting something that's probably going to end very badly. Should have done this yesterday. Why is it on backwards? Because I bought this real used, because I really like it. The last guy apparently doesn't have a reel with the correct hand. Did you remember your reels? All of them. <laughs> are you a backwards reeler? You are a backwards No, reeler. I'm not. That's why I'm trying to fix this one. Really. <laughs> Nothing like waiting to the last minute. Oh, we got a couple hours. Really, it just doesn't have the traction. It's just kind of a no, I don't think. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, Spencer, I'll sing if you'll sing first. I'll sing second. Let me hold the camera. <laughs> Don't touch it. I'll sing second if you'll sing first. Brent, are you a singer? I could be convinced. Hey, <laughs> all right. <laughs> it ain't going to be pretty. <laughs> Curtis? <laughs> Curtis is clearly not a singer. The ice definitely moved. Well, we found open water. It's, I was gonna say January, but it's actually early February. Open water, and we're not joking. This is not secretly filmed in September. Spencer will even show you the ice that we're close to, but it's ice off. Boom, roasted. <laughs> Super straight shooter. Spencer, you just helped me line this in the car, thank you. You're welcome. Fancy new Rio Midge tip. Midge tip in it? Oh, I might as well try it. Okay, we're at the lake. I saw fish are going to be a little shallower. Uh, still going to need uh, to get our flies down a little bit. So we're going to look at lines. What lines should I use? And this is just kind of a sampling of a lot of different ones. Um, I'm probably going to go with something that's a sink tip, like a little midge tip. Uh, so we've got a Rio. Uh, hover version of the midge tip and this is in a six weight and you'll notice that on the still water side of things I'm I've got what eight eight reels with different lines here that's just again one of those things where you get into a little bit more you're switching lines probably a little bit more um, we want to use the lines to get down rather than just flies um, <clears throat> but we're also going to be throwing some indicators so we'll just dial in where the fish are and we'll rope them all literally all of them. okay let's talk about some fly selection um obviously winter not a lot of bugs insect activity although we'll look a little bit later once we get some samples so i'm probably going to lead out with a uh, maybe a bugger sort of deal and a little blank saver style balanced leech and then i'll put that on i'll probably then swap to the old coronamid section and if I'm throwing it a little deeper, we're gonna go a darker color coronamid with some weight. And then at the top, I may have a little Dialbach or an unweighted coronamid pupa because if the bugs are hatching that, they'll start you know, the day a little lower and kind of pupate and come up to the surface and get some more silvery. So that's the mix for today, for at least right now, and then we'll see how that goes. All right, I'm gonna go ultra imitative. I'm going to start out with the old chartreuse mop, the uh, free living caddis slash crane fly larva imitation extraordinaire. And then I think I'm going to put a chronomid on, chronomid Frenchie. Just got to find one with a hook I like, like that one right there. Do a little chronomid Frenchie. I'm just going to try two to begin with and see if we can find some fish. So Curtis was kind enough to pick out a bunch of flies for me this morning, but I brought the hanging with my chromies, the secret weapon that we're going to hope works. Then I'll go with one of his flies underneath as a balance leech. Are we allowed to fish two or three here? Three. Three, maybe. Three? Oh, yeah. So we can double up the coronamids. 
What is that? You get to fish like 10 feet of depth over three flies? I'll take that. <laughs> All right, I've got a brand new line on, which you can see has a little bit of memory. Brand new lines always have lots of memory, but every time you take your line off of your reel, it takes a bit of a set to the reel, to that round shape. So first thing you wanna do at the beginning of each day is give that line a stretch. Otherwise, you're gonna deal with tangles like that all day long. But if we just take a few minutes here, we'll even take a few minutes, a few seconds, and give your line a nice stretch. You might have to do it periodically to stretch a particular part of the line that didn't get it all the way a few times during the day. But if you start this way, it will release all of that memory and make your casting much more efficient and your rest of your day much more tangle free. So I'm just pulling off sections, giving it a good stretch, holding it there for just a second. all the way down to the end of the line and you can tell it's quite a bit less coily than it was a second ago. That then lets me cast it without it tingling. The update is when we started it was crystal clear calm, no wind, Blue skies, which in the still water terms means go home. Um, but now we're 20 mile an hour winds. And so we've switched locations. I'm still using pitch tip. I think Lance is too. Brand has switched to a sink tip. Um, I've got two chronomids and a scud. We saw a bunch of sow bugs. And just kind of trying to figure it out. It's a weird one today. Normally, when the ice comes off this reservoir here, it's money, but not today so much. All right, I caught this tree pounder, literally the heaviest thing I've caught today. If you guys don't believe that there are sow bugs in still waters, as well as scuds, this tree pounder proves that there are sow bugs. They've go? probably all gone off by now. No nope, right there. Oh, oh yeah, look at it. Sow bug, not a scud. And it's a still water. Now you know. Knowing is half the battle. All right, we are going to surrender to this location. When uh, the wind's blowing this hard, we're going to go to where the wind's at our backs, which happens to be the other side of the lake. So. Let's start walking. Now we'll drive. fun fish. All right, we're out midge tipping, ice off. The water's really cold. I've got one of the new Rio midge tips on. This is the long. We're just fishing out here a little ways. We've got a little bit of nice chop right at the moment. Cast it out, let them sink to depth. I've got a little balance leech. That one ate an olive balance leech. Cast it out as far as you can in the wind. Let it get to depth and just slow roll it back. Lots of stops, lots of pauses. And then strip set, hold on. That thing was a jumper. fishing with, right? Uh, we've got like a small damsel, chartreuse size, and then a 
suppose that's a sow bug imitation. Yeah. No legs on it, but yeah. looks about right size and color. And then this is the key part of my rig. If you if you uh, circle this up together, it'll have more drag. It moves a lot more water. The fish can find the fly so much easier. Okay, we are basically standing in the ice right here, forced to stand in the ice. But the fish are in a little shallower, so um, I don't know if I explained my setup, but I've got a 10 foot six weight rod, which is good for lakes when you're on still water from shore, also from a tube and a boat. Um, get more line off the water quicker. Then I've got a about a four foot butt section and then my three flies are spaced five feet apart. So, you know, you're looking at about 20 feet total, 15 feet of separation. And I just lost a pretty nice fish on a leech. And now I'm going to tie on another leech in Cheech's honor. It's called a Thin Mint. Might have heard of it before. And we'll see how that does. But, yeah, they're in a little shallower here. Got a break from the wind, standing in the ice. It's all good. Junker. Oh, it says it's spawning time. It's not quite spawning time, but it's close. All right, we pumped this fish, and they are just full of Daphnia. Tiny, tiny little plankton. These guys are almost chartreuse green. The day was a little bit slower than we expected. The water's very cold, the fish were tough. We moved around a little, found just one or two fish on the other side, and then once the wind really picked up, we came to the lee side of the wind just to make it a little easier on casting. And we found a few more fish, which was quite nice. Uh, I've been fishing a midge tip the entire time. This is one of the new Rio midge tips, the, the six foot, so the long. Uh, it's, like, like I said earlier, it's just been important to cast out as far as you can, let the flies get down deep, and then just crawl them really slow with lots of pauses. If you went too fast, you'd lift the flies up off the bottom too much, and the fish weren't having it. But if you went nice and slow, there were fish to be had. We caught a few nice fish, mostly small fish. I'm using the 10 foot six weight Sage R8, uh, my favorite still water rod. Okay, we have decided to call it quits today. We got a few fish. Um, I <clears throat> might not have caught very many. Lance made it up, it's literally 20 feet from me, stealing my good spot, of course. But anyway, we're gonna have a, li a link down below in the description for all the stuff we used. Uh, rods, lines, when you get into still water, there's lots of good stuff. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below uh, or messages, but Stillwater is going to be a fun game this year. There's a lot of water, so stay tuned for more. We'll catch you next time. Okay, 
Uh, one of the things that we like to do with these videos is go through a little bit of a, a breakdown of the flies that we used and what worked and kind of why it worked. So as we were fishing, usually, and again, this is right after ice off, it's uh, early spring, not even spring, it's winter. And you tend to find a lot of uh, chironomids during that time. If you're going to find anything, we're certainly not seeing anything hatching in numbers, although we did see some chironomids on the surface. So as we look at the flies that were most effective, we'll really break it down into two categories with the number one type of fly pattern that we did, uh, that we had success with was a chironomid. In Lance's case, he was using a Frenchy chironomid, uh, or chironomid Frenchy, and I was using uh, same thing. And then also a a combination of like what would be a snow cone or something like that. And then um, I was using an oil slick buzzer. And then I was also using a blood worm to get a little further down because as you start with the coronamid hatch, they tend to focus a little bit more on uh, closer to the bottom, which would be more of your blood worms or kind of wriggling and getting out of the detr detritus on the bottom. And then those chironomids will start to pupate and, and rise to the surface. So anything that's going to imitate either a blood worm or an early stage pupa, which is going to typically be black and red or mostly black with a little bit of silver. And the further that hatch progresses, the higher in the water column they'll be, you'll start to see more silvers and blacks or silvers and reds. And so that was a, a successful pattern in general. Overall, it was kind of a slow day. It wasn't crazy fast. So you really had to dial in the pattern and then the presentation. The other thing that uh, we tended to do fairly well with would be uh, small leech patterns. Uh, olives and blacks are kind of the ones that I would start out with. And then again, it's kind of through the water column. Now, one thing we did see with both of those types of patterns was the fact that when it all came down to it, the fish were, I would say, really stuck close to the bottom and they were not moving to feed. They weren't uh, cruising around just chomping on food. So the key there was either an extremely slow retrieve with a, like a midge tip, both Lance and I had started with that. And had I done it again, and this is my fault for going in a different direction, I would have probably started off with an indicator to get that right close within a foot to six inches of the bottom, starting again with our coronamids and small leeches. What I did instead after I was uh, using the midge tip and then retrieving it extremely slowly, letting it sink down, I actually went to a parabolic line because I was convinced that more of the fish, if they were just a little further down, maybe they were going to be enticed by that motion of the buoyant fly. So that would be a booby on the point and then a heavier leech as the top dropper and maybe a chronomid in the middle. So at the end of the day, the thing that was most effective were the chironomids. The leeches were really good. Uh, we'll give you some links below so that you can click on some of the, the bugs that would be good. This again is probably applicable to any early spring, late winter still water fishing when it comes to colder water temps, colder temps outside. Um, looking at ways to get the fish <clears throat> eat, eating and uh, hopefully catch them. And again, if I were to do this again, I would have focused more on just an indicator rig, dial in the depth, and then mess around with the patterns from there. So check out those links. They're a good starter for you to uh, dial in the flies that you may want to use in your specific still water during this time of year.